So Alice can encrypt files on her own drive and keep them secure. But if she doesn't, or if some kind of leakage occurs, she may leave behind remnants of those files that someone examining the disk can recover. A file on a disk consists of two parts. The file's actual data, which is stored in as many data blocks as are necessary to cover the file's size, and the file's metadata, which is stored in a database such as a file allocation table. When Alice deletes a file, all it does is remove the metadata. It does not remove the file's contents from the disk blocks. In many cases, it doesn't even remove the file's metadata, just marks it as deleted so it doesn't show up in the list. Eventually, these blocks will be overwritten as new files are saved to the disk. But until that happens, the file can be partially or even fully recovered. The software to do this is freely available. For example, Piriform's tool Recova. Any file can be recovered from any sort of digital medium that mounts as a drive, including SSDs and USB flash sticks. It can get these files even if the disk has been formatted. Recova can even recover files from damaged drives and do a deep scan to find traces of files that were otherwise lost. This can be a useful tool to recover files you've inadvertently deleted, or from drives that have become damaged or were accidentally reformatted. But it's bad news if someone else is using it to get files you've deleted, files that have sensitive data you don't want anyone else to have. If Alice knows she needs to delete a file permanently, with no chance of ever recovering it, then instead of deleting it, she needs to securely erase the file. Erasing the file not only destroys the file's metadata, but also overwrites the blocks where the files are stored. An excellent free tool to do this is Eraser from Heidi. There is some controversy around this, but it may not be enough to simply overwrite the file's blocks. The reason why is that hard disks are magnetic, and traces of the old contents may be left behind. If a block has only been written to once in the history of the disk, and then it's overwritten with zeros, there may be tiny vestiges of the voltage left behind, which means that someone examining the disk with sensitive enough equipment could reconstruct the data. But you don't have to overwrite it with zeros. You can overwrite it with pseudorandom data. This ends up working somewhat analogously to a one-time pad that we learned about way back in part one. Overwriting some bits with one and some bits with zero might obfuscate it enough to make it a secure wipe. But maybe not. Since this pseudo-random data can be easily read, the appropriate voltages could theoretically be canceled out to reveal the previously written data. Two passes might be in order. The first pass would be with pseudo-random data, and the second would depend on what you wanted. If you wanted to make it look as though this part of the disk has always been empty, you can overwrite it with zeros. If you want to make it look like the normal left-behind remnants of files, you can overwrite it with another pass of pseudo-random data. Both the British HMG InfoSec Standard 5 and the U.S. Department of Defense 5220.22-M standards specify a three-pass wipe. The first pass with zeros, the second pass with ones, and the third pass with pseudo-random data. There are others. The most ridiculous has to be the Gutman method, named for Peter Gutman, who first proposed it in 1996. This method uses a total of 35 passes in various configurations. The reason for all of this is that at the time, there were many different kinds of hard drives available, including older drive standards like MFM and RLE. The idea of Gutman's method was that this is something that would be effective no matter what kind of hard drive you tried it on, but while some would be necessary for MFM drives and some for RLE, no one hard drive will ever need all 35 passes. In fact, Gutman himself said that when used on modern hard drives, it will have no more effect than a simple scrubbing with random data. Some erasure software is still included as an option, but it's nothing more than a historical remnant. In fact, there's never been any proof of any kind to show that you need anything more than a simple single pass of pseudo-random data. Good programs like Eraser let you erase not only individual files, but wipe the free space as well, just to make sure there are no old remnants of anything left behind. Eraser even includes an option to erase everything in the recycle bin. This will give you a chance to recover anything you need, securely wiping the rest when you're sure it's safe. Eraser can also do a secure move. This isn't necessary when you're moving a file somewhere else on the same partition, in other words, to another folder on the same drive letter. Because then, all the file system does is change the metadata to make the file appear in its new location. 
The blocks on the disk aren't changed at all, nor do they need to be. But when you're moving to another device or partition, a move is really a copy followed by a delete. And we're talking about the standard delete here, the one that just marks the file's metadata and changes nothing in the data blocks. Eraser can do a secure move, where it copies the file to its destination, and then performs an erase on the original file. You can even schedule tasks to be done in the future or at regular intervals. For example, you can set it to wipe your free space once a week. There are better utilities to wipe your data if you're getting rid of your computer entirely. If you throw away a computer, you need to understand that hackers are not above doing a bit of trash digging. And especially if you sell a computer, you have no idea who will buy it and what they will do with it. Hackers continually buy used PCs hoping to get lucky. Any sensitive data needs to be erased completely. This is a big problem. Professors Simpson Garfinkel and Abi Shalat did a study on 158 hard drives they had purchased used online, primarily on eBay. Only 9% of them had been securely wiped prior to resale. 32% had been formatted, but as we discussed, that doesn't actually remove the data. Many of them contained sensitive data, including credit card numbers. There was even one from an ATM that had 2,868 bank card numbers with their pins. So it's important that, whether you're selling or discarding your computer, that you securely wipe the hard drive. The problem with the utilities that we talked about in the last video is that they require the operating system to be up and running. If you're resetting the computer using its recovery tools so that it comes away it did from the factory, this isn't an issue. Just run the erasure software after the restored OS boots and wipe the free space. But if you want to blank out a hard disk entirely, you're going to need a separate boot utility, such as Derek's Boot and Nuke, or DBAN. This comes as an image file you can use to write a bootable CD or USB disk. Booting from this utility means that you can securely wipe every single sector, including sectors used by the operating system and even swap file data. All of the information will be gone, permanently, and you'll have no reason to fear hackers pulling your information off of this sold or discarded hard drive. Please note, however, that these erasure methods will not work on SSDs and with most flash media. The reason why is that these have a limited number of writes, so to extend the life of the device, most of them employ a technique known as wear leveling. With regular hard disk drives, each disk block maps to particular physical sectors on the drive surface. They never change, unless a sector goes bad and needs to be remapped. So overwriting a file's data blocks causes the actual physical magnetism in those same sectors to be affected. With wear leveling, blocks map virtually to cells on the SSD, Whenever a block is written to, the drive looks for an area that hasn't been written to in a while, maps the block there, and writes the data. That means that the old data from the old block is still on the disk, waiting for a competent hacker to retrieve it. In fact, the only thing an erasure utility would do is cause unnecessary writes to the disk, shortening its lifespan. It's worse than useless. Although some manufacturers offer secure erasure utilities for their drives, and the industry is working on standards to make this possible for all SSDs, for now, the only secure solution is to avoid the problem to begin with, encrypt the drive with VeraCrypt, and none of this is an issue. Deleted file blocks are still encrypted, and if you need to sell the drive, just lose the encryption password. Assuming you picked a secure enough password to begin with, again, if your password is monkey, there's not much anyone can do to help you. So now you know about securing your own drives, the hard drive in your system, as well as removable drives. But cloud storage, which is being used more and more, presents different challenges since the storage of the data is out of the user's hands. In the next video, we'll cover how to secure your cloud storage against hackers.